Final Cut Pro for iPad 2.2 as well as Final Cut Camera 1.2 just dropped. Here's everything you need to know about the updates. The first feature that I'm the most excited about is the ability to not only edit horizontally, but we can edit in the portrait landscape mode. Notice how this gives me all of this extra screen real estate for my timeline. And if I hold the iPad like this with both hands, it's really easy for me to access most of the buttons here just using my thumbs. Apple Intelligence is making its way into Final Cut Pro for iPad. And one of the new features is Image Playground. This was just added in Final Cut Pro for Mac, and it's also available here in Final Cut Pro for iPad. To get access to it, you'll just go to your import button in the top middle, then select image playground. Let's say I need to generate a sunset. I'm just going to use their suggestion here and create a sunset. This will work just like image playground has in the past using the app version, but now it's embedded directly into Final Cut Pro. Once you're happy with your generated image, you can press done. If I scroll down through my project media, you'll notice I have the sunset here that I've generated and I can add it in as an image directly into my video. Another really great quality of life feature is the ability to capture in 50 frames per second directly inside of Final Cut Pro for iPad. To get access to that, we'll just press our camera here and we can select Pro Camera. Here inside of the camera, you'll notice at the top, I can change my frame rate. Right now it's at 24 frames per second, and I can set that all the way to 50 frames per second if I want to. I know many people across the pond that are going to be very excited about this, so I'm happy for all of you. And the last feature to come to Final Cut Pro for iPad is some additional keyboard shortcuts, which you can get by using a keyboard with your iPad. One of those features being the ability to nudge a selection, which you can get just by pressing the period or comma keys that will allow me to move it over one frame, or we can press shift period or shift comma and then we'll move it by 10 frames. You can also now replace with a gap clip. So simply select your clip and then press shift and delete, and that will replace that clip with a gap clip. And another really great keyboard shortcut is the ability to lift from storylines. So you can push option, command, and up arrow. That will raise it up off of the primary storyline. Or if you want to place something down on the primary storyline, you can push option, command, down arrow. And you can see how that has overwritten the clip that was here previously. But it's not just Final Cut Pro for iPad that got an update. Final Cut Camera also received some love. Firstly, you can switch to the 48 millimeter camera on iPhone 14 Pro and newer. You can also play back your footage in a Rec. 709 LUT. So I'll just jump to my media in the lower right hand corner. Then you'll see in the top left, it says LUT. I can change that over to off and see how I originally shot it, or we can switch it back to log SDR. Another super cool feature is the ability to record videos in spatial audio for even more realistic and immersive sound. To change your audio to spatial, you'll need to make sure you're not in the log format. So I can change this over to either HDR, HLG, or SDR. Then in my settings, we can go over to audio, and change the format to spatial audio. Also, you'll notice in the top left corner of the viewer, that there's a small spatial icon. And of course, last but not least, you can also record at 50 frames per second directly inside a Final Cut camera. I'll just go up to my frames per second here in the top left and select 50 frames per second. It's great to have all of these various options so that anybody in the world can create. If you enjoyed this video, then I have a strong feeling you're also going to enjoy the last update video I did for iPad, showcasing some really amazing new features that came to Final Cut Pro for iPad 2. 